Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're going to have a closer look at the TAD, the Tactical Awareness Display. So it's not just a moving map, it's not called the map because it does more than navigation. It does do navigation but it also does targeting and data link and general situational awareness. So the first thing we're going to do is control, show controlling for zooming in and out. So first of all we need to make this guy soy. We're going to press coolly left long to do that. And once it's got the box around it, it is soy, it is our center of interest. At that point, we can use DMS up and down or forwards and backwards to zoom in and out. So we're currently zoomed at one to 250K and we've got our distance there. That distance is the radius of the outer circle. So from us to the radius to that outer circle is five miles and that to the inner circle is 2.5 miles. So we can change that if I press DMS aft and aft again and aft again and aft again that is now 80 miles so 80 miles from us to the edge of that circle 40 miles to that circle there we are there and as standard we are in the center of the tad display so if we zoom in let's see what we've got written on our tab we've got no targeting information at the moment what we do have some is some nav information if i go to our f10 map here and we clicked on us and there we are we can see that we've got some waypoints as set per the mission editor waypoint one two and three so those are shown on the TAD. You can see waypoint one, two, and three. We've also got our SPI, our sensor point of interest. We only have, ever have one SPI. Currently waypoint one is selected as our SPI, and that's represented by this, what we call the white wedding cake here. Now we can move around um, this map with our cursor, and I'm just gonna quickly show how you do that. It's these two guys that you can see wiggling here. Hotas, slew, horizontal, and vertical. And we can move this about and we can move it over certain items like this guy here, our waypoint three. And we can get information about that point that we've selected. So we can start going over the information now. First of all, we get a northing and an easting coordinate of the element that we have currently selected. And we've got element three, waypoint three selected because our cross, our designated cross is over it. Out of interest, I could change that to MGRS instead of longitude latitude by pressing that there. And then we get the MGRS coordinates back to long lat but we want long lat on so we've got long lat on there next we've got a bearing and a range and an altitude so this element this waypoint three is at an altitude of 1000 feet asl and is a bearing of 109 for 35 miles and it's slightly hidden at the moment but there is a little yellow arrow pointing towards us there so that's saying that there's a bearing from that element to us of 109 at 35 if you wanted to change that so it was a bearing or heading if you like from us to it we could change that here so instead of from hook to own it's now own to hook and the arrow is now pointing downwards and now it's a, a bearing from us to that element three and it's now 289 for 35 miles and it's obviously still at a thousand feet so we're just going to reset that back to standard Next, we've got the net. If we click on net here, this is all about our saddle or our data link. And here we can change our own ID within a data link. So the whole idea of this TAD is that it's not just a single A10. It's a data linked information from a whole series of A10s that are working on a saddle system, a data link system. And we can share information. So if one A10 spots some jihadis down here, they can put uh, they can put a target mark down there, and then they can translate that information onto our tab, so we can see that information. We can change within the saddle our own ID here, and our group, you can have several groups of data links, and for instance, I'm in group one at the moment, but I could change that to group two. And out of interest, you can also change your call sign from within that saddle group here. I could type in something here on the UFC, cap or whatever, and I could press call, and that would change my call sign. Okay, to get out of the net, we can go back to the tad here. This is the main default tad screen. Out of interest, we can declutter this tad screen. If we've got too much going on, we can press declutter. Just gets rid of the icons. Turn that back on. Let's work our way around anti-clockwise. Next is a SPI. Do we want to broadcast our SPI, our center point of interest? And at the moment, it is that there. It happens to be waypoint one. I could actually broadcast that. I can't do it when I'm on the ground and and whatnot but i could and then anyone else on my saddle network would be able to see my speed and that's how i broadcast my information to them uh we've got the scale here we've got the distance here in miles from us to the outer circle we've got at the top here a series of profiles a bit like the weapon profiles that we have on the dsms we can view the tad in a series of preset profiles we can have here, here we've got a, prof a profile called all which shows basically everything 
We've got another profile called L off here, which shows it with something off, something's removed. I think it's the lines between the waypoints have been turned off. We've got another one that's called act, and then some more stuff disappears. We've got another one that's called non, and a whole load of other stuff disappears. So uh, these profiles can be changed and can be set, as we'll see in a minute. We'll go back to all for now before we go into look at how we configure those profiles and then we have the map option here do we want it auto off so we have the picture of the map off or we have a manual now according to the manual this is to do with how the map scales uh, but we haven't got any further information on that we've got the change here this is how we display our bearing and our range down here as you saw it was hooked to own so this little cross is essentially where we hooking something so if we can hook that guy there that's us hooking waypoint three and that's our hook there we can change we can re inverse the hook from us to them or them to us and then we can do other stuff like from the hook to the bullseye from the bullseye to the hook from the hook to the cursor so that's the hook to our little cursor there cursor to the hook from bullseye to the cursor and you've got a whole load of these we can select and then it's going to go back to own aircraft to the hook Next is if we want to create a new waypoint. So if we move our cursor over to, and we hook this chap here, we've hooked waypoint three there, we can create that as a new waypoint. It wouldn't be much point in creating a waypoint over another waypoint, but we could create it over another type of hook, like a mark point or something like that. And we could create waypoint four by clicking there. We've also got our bearing and range from bulls to us. So from bulls, which is here, which is a static point, for the mission to our plane, we've got 174 for 63 miles. Now we're going to go into configuring the profiles. So we click control. We can select different profiles from here. We can select default, non, act, L off, all. We can create a new profile here. So if we were to type in a name, then we could click new and that will create us a new profile. We can delete a profile. We can reset to the default uh, TAD settings there. We can go back to the TAD there, or we can change the settings of a profile. So we've got a profile selected, and we go to change settings. Here we can change what is displayed within that profile. Do you want balls displayed? Do you want uh, range rings? Do you want hook info? We can scroll down the list like that. And we can toggle whether we want it off or on here, symbol off and on. So I want waypoint lines off. I want waypoint labels off. Not really sure why you'd want to do this, but it's all configurable. This is one of the things that makes the 18C so powerful, but also so difficult to learn. There's so much stuff here to configure. And you would click save there if you wanted to save that profile, but I'm just going to return to default uh, or turn back without saving anything, and reset any changes I've done, and get back to the main TAD screen. Now, note that if we press the China hat forward switch, then we get these extra modes, EXP1 and EXP2. These are centre on the cursor, so rather than our own aircraft. And with it centred on the cursor like that, we can then move the map down to wherever we want on the map and do stuff like uh, hook up to targets that a friendly guy in our saddle data link has created. So that's, that's just something we can do. And if we press China Hat forward again, it goes back to our standard mode. So next we want to show actually doing something with this map so we i'm going to move my cursor to i don't know a target or something uh, so i'm going to say there's a target on that red thing there i'm going to create a mark point from that by pressing tms right short so i've done that and you can see now we've got a mark point of a there and then we can do something with that mark point we could create a waypoint from it or we could set our speed there and then go and fire mavericks at that or something like that so we've plotted this mark here. Let's say we wanted to make someone else aware of this uh, mark, uh, not via the saddle days link, but by a call from our reference point, which is bulls. Then what we could do is change this, for instance. We could go to bull to hook. Our hook is currently this element A, uh, mark A. And we can see now that we've got from bulls, this mark point A is one zero, oh, sorry, 191 for 119 miles, and it's at an altitude of 920 feet. As well as that, we, if we had other aircraft on our saddle data link flying around, we would get information. Uh, they would appear as an icon on here and we could interrogate them and we could see them visually where our saddled friends are, but we don't have anyone flying at the moment. 
And that's it. Um, that's all we want to show. Uh, one correction we want to make. We said we could broadcast speed here by pressing on and off. Uh, that's not actually true. We can't actually toggle that on and off there. This is just a display showing whether we are broadcasting our speed or not. We broadcast our speed by another function. And rather than go through that now, we actually show that in the, the Saddle Data Link video. Uh, that's all for now. I hope that helps and see you later.